Thanks for staying with us. We had initially advertised that we're going to have the Commissioner of Police um, here today to talk about the, the Okada ban in Lagos State and the enforcement especially because many have complained last week that many Okadas were taken uh, from, from people. I wanted to understand the modus operandi of the police in this, but unfortunately we're told a few moments ago that he can't be here. We still try to see if we can get him on sometime this week to know exactly how they intend to enforce because which is really crucial. Where we, we had mentioned it yesterday, we don't want a situation whereby um, people are becoming high-handed on this matter. So it would be nice to talk to the police to know how their plans are. But we have to move on to other topics. So there's another topic that actually caught our attention. A young lady or a young man, I, I, would, I would choose not to use the person's name because we don't have the full story yet. But the story that came to us, which was interesting, was the fact that this man allegedly worked for a company where they gave him a bike. Now, bike, we don't know if it's a bicycle. We don't know if it's a, a normal motorbike. We're not sure. It's not really clear. But he was given a bike, and according to him, the bike was stolen from him when he got at home. He reported to the office that the bike was stolen. The office obviously got him arrested because they felt that's their property. They arrested him and insisted that that bike must be repaid. And then he was detained, and while being detained, he was able to get the money to pay back for the bike. Unfortunately, he was not released, even though he had made full payment for the bike, according to the story. Sadly, I think he was arrested, uh, I'm not in sure March. the dates now, in March, thank you, YK, in March. And he then was still from March to April, April 24. 24th, he then died in custody. Oh. Now, the family are seeking justice. Now, I said I'm not going to mention the name of this person or the company involved because we are yet to get confirmation from the company to know their own side of the story. So it would be unfair to bring this out there. But it's good to, these kind of stories bring up other issues of how we treat others even when they have failed us, even when somebody has stolen from you, what, what's the way, how do we handle it? Do we detain them to, to punish them? Or what's the right thing to do in this kind of situations? Um, who is at fault? Is it the police? Because the police is saying he was sick during custody. Or is it the people who got him arrested? What exactly, have, what are your thoughts? Because this is a part of the Nigerian judicial system that we don't understand. Mm. Somebody wronged you, you don't know what the process is. So that's our conversation today. Call us on the numbers on your screen. And you can also tweet us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag... Your view, TV, so we can read your tweets. Yes, YK, you know, you're going to something. Yeah, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but from what I know of the law, you are not supposed to detain a person for more than 48, 48 hours, hours. Mm -hmm. without taking them to court. Mm -hmm. This guy seems to have been in prison for about a month. Yeah. For hey. what? You, you didn't take him to court, so you are, they're using power. Why and, are you keeping and, him there? And, yes, and that's my problem with... The system here, we, we lord it over people who we think are less than us. We lord it over people because we have money. Yes. And mm -hmm. it's some, it's a, I think it's a character flaw, a very big character flaw that has to change in this mm. part of the world, yes. honestly. Yes. So uh, when I read the story, I, was, I felt really bad because I know that when you lose something as a human being, of course it hurts. If you have an organization and you have employed people to work there, and then this one gets pulsed today, this one gets misplaced today. I know it hurts, but I, I, I want to employ that we begin to have that milk of human kindness. So as an employer that I am myself, what I would have done in that situation was to, okay, because I know that if you are really a thief, you won't come back to report. You would sell the bike and go. You know, you just disappear with it. But the fact that you came back to say this is what happened, I was okay. Uh, even if I want you to pay for it, I will have to start deducting it from your salary. I would spread it. And if I pay it to a certain, if you pay to a certain level, I could say, okay, let's forget about it because I have seen that it, it happened by mistake. I've seen your intention that it happened by mistake. But um, to quickly just arrest this young man, and then even after he had finished payment, we're not making any move to release him. I think it's very, very unfair. I think it's just a misuse of power, an abuse of power. You feel you can do it. I have the money to lock you up there and nothing can happen. But those, now that he has died, the, the, the conversation has changed. Yes, see, I'll come to that conversation, but does a citizen have the right to hold somebody? Is it not the police? I mean, is, it, is there a lawyer? Can I just say I'm arresting Nima and keep her there for two weeks? Do I have that right? Not. I don't think you do. So in Nigeria, no. it happens right. a lot. Oh, you do not have that right. It's a big map or a small man thing. I will show you. I will, show I will you. lock you up and throw away the keys. Yes. Without any clear charges. You can't just lock up a person. And even if there are clear charges, you have to charge the person to court within 48 hours and with a court order hold on 
continue detaining the person. So without a court order, you can't just continue. But in Nigeria, mm. in fact, even the federal government does not obey rule of law. Mm. So we know courts will grant bail several times. And this attitude this is why I always say, when you're in leadership, you're in a position of influence. Your, your actions will continue to inform how the people's way of life will continue to go. If the federal government as a government cannot obey federal, a court order to release a person or grant a person bail, and immediately they you know, hold on to the person while they form a fresh charge, that's the problem entirely. In this case, it's, it's so painful. Number one, there's something called malicious prosecution here. And it's actionable. So I'm hoping that the family of, the, uh, of this young man will do the need for it. I didn't read this story. I just heard you just say mm. he died. You know, I didn't expect mm. that yeah. sort of event. So there's also something called false prosecution here. And it's also actionable. So I'm hoping that the young man's family will we'll sue this up. company for everything that they are worth. Mm. And even if the court is taking forever, sit on it. Mm. If it takes you 10 years, be in court every single day and see if judgment will not come your way. Mm. This young man's life is worth it. And the precedent that it will send to other companies. The other day, we took a report of a young man who tried to resign from one company, a woman, headed by a woman he was working with. And she said that everybody that tried to resign from her company, this is what she does to them. She would get them arrested, saying that they are stolen from her, find cases. And the young man was thinking of going back to resume. He said that's how she controls people. And it happened internally. It's closer here mm. because the person affected was um, you know, a colleague. And I was wondering, how do people just do these things? Then the police themselves, how do people just buy you into this? Yeah. So there's the part mm. of... That's the real question. That's, 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 that's it. Uh -huh. That's, that's the it. area of fundamental right abuse. And the police know. That the police should be protecting us. The police, what is your also have protected this young man? Well, no, no, the police, police, police should, should be not prosecuted. Even, thank you. The police should not even protect. The police should investigate. And do their job. If there was a case I, I had to do at Onurike, and I know the person because I had to stand in for that young man. Somebody was dating someone. The father of the girl then says he was, she was kidnapped. Locks his daughter up somewhere, and they arrested this young boy and locked him five days. I have to ask police, if he kidnaps her while he's in detention here, Where is the will girl? she escape? Mm -hmm. Will he release her from here? You're holding on to him. Why not release him? Plant somebody to follow him. Maybe he will lead you to wherever this girl is. But you're holding on to him and his father comes here every day. You make the old man pay 3,000, any amount of money daily, saying that yeah, he's for his feet and all of that. And nobody was investigating anything. But when we threatened to escalate, that young man was then released. Only for the family of the girl to be calling me, please don't escalate, don't put, take it to the media. These things happen. The police, if you arrest somebody for a crime, investigate the crime. And it's beyond just questioning the person, mm. locking up the person. Mm. Follow the trail. If yeah. it is about a bike missing, you know, they should, if, they, if, they, if people are alleging that he stole the bike, they track it. If they, they track it. And, and if he returned the bike, he didn't paid. confess it's to yeah. stealing Let it. Let me take this call from Charge him to court. Abu Bakr from Maryland. Good morning, Abu Bakr. Are you there? Hello, Abu Bakr, you're live. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Hello? Yes, go ahead, you're live. Can you hear me? Very clearly. Hello? We can hear you. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. He's struggling to hear. Good morning to everybody in the house. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And my, my greeting goes to Yemi. Happy you. birthday to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, this thing has happened to me before. Mm. I'm a driver by profession. I'm driving a, a, a wealthy man. Mm. So we went out with a jeep. I don't know how it happened. He told me, he told me to go. He went to club with the jeep and he told me to leave the key with him here at the club and went home. The next day, in the morning as I resumed, I met a policeman there. He showed me inside the car that I, I'm, my attention is needed at the police station. What happened? Hey, that is the order from my boss. From getting to police station, I was told I stole the uh, 50,000 naira. <laughs> that is how I entered one chance. So I spent three weeks in the police cell wow. before I was transferred to uh, Panty. I spent another two weeks in Panty. 
So my family gathered the money and paid the money. Police refused to release me at my feet. Hey. They say I should pay another extra money again before I can wow. be released. So one of my brothers called the attention of a lawyer. When the lawyer came, the lawyer said they should charge me to court. Now let we should meet, they should tell him the date that I will charge to court. To be sincere with you, I spent almost three months in Banki before I was released. At the end of the day, it is the madam that found the money under the seat of the oh, car. Oh, Father in heaven. So, it's all, always happened in Nigeria like that. If you mm -hmm. don't have anybody to fight for you, you just mm, that's it. suffer for nothing. Thank you very much, Abdul. So, to God be the glory, I'm still alive today. Mm. That's my own contribution. Thank you, Abubakar, Thank for sharing you. the story. Thank you. You see, this is the Nigerian story, and it it's such is. a pathetic story. It is. If you don't yeah. know anybody, if you don't have any connection, that's it. You're done that's for. That's it. Well, why should it be? We, we yeah, have, that's, that's a sad why part should of it, it be? Yeah. We, 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 they will not the compensate him. Mm -mm. For I'm shouting. They will say, say sorry. Sorry, sorry. Which compensation? So I won't even say sorry. Even if they were going to compensate him, which compensation would be equal? I'm just let's not even say he died like the young man. Like Abubakar, what compensation can compensate you for three months? Of your life, a character lost. damage, innocent detention, of suffering, and the state of those places where they are locked. Which, except that you sue that man mm -hmm. for that false accusation that he did not investigate and the, and the malicious prosecution. Let the court sue say you to go and test it criminally, mm -hmm. not just even civilly. You know, Moraya, we have um, a culture of oppression. It's a culture. It's already ingrained in us. We like to. Once you feel do I you have more I than am? this person, do you know who I am? They will hit their hand on their chest. I can lock you up, I can shut you down, I can do this. God we have that you. culture. However, the, the, the security agencies and the systems that are supposed to save us from ourselves, protect us from going to the extreme in that oppression, connive with us. And they connive with the money back. They connive once you have money, because even if they want to help you fight your case, they will say you need to buy fuel. You need to pay a recharge ah, card. You need to you. do this. You need to do that. By the time you look at your pocket, you don't have anything. And then they move to the direction of the person who would give them money to do what they need to do. So it's always tilted to who is paying. And I think that should stop. I think we should begin to uh, make noise. I, I really don't yeah. understand why uh, the family members of this boy did not start shouting when he was locked up. They waited till he had died. No, you know, we are hearing no, something. No, so they, no, I will tell you, no, I will explain. No, that's because not what by this time, they are begging the police. So please, please release me. Because they don't have power. And they refunded the bike they did not steal. Let me they, take gave this call. Him, they, they gave them the money. Uh, you see, at times like this, we need to speak to the police. Honestly. I would really like to have somebody... The man will not want to come they, on our show. Well, I really need to speak uh, to the police. I, was, I would have been ready for him today, but... But let me, take, let me take this call. I like you. are threatening me. No, to ask him questions. Hello, good morning. Good morning, you're live. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, yeah, so I, my contribution to the um, conversation is of a personal um, experience. Being a lawyer myself and then having uh, had issues with uh, releasing uh, prisoners from uh, prisoners who have been held without trial in, in prison, is in, you'll find it, so many cases where people just go take people and put them in prison and nobody comes for them. Mm. They are not charged to court. And as um, uh, uh, the YK has mentioned already, that the Constitution says you should not be held for a longer period of time than mm. what is in the Constitution without being arraigned in court. The last one we had was a, a young girl who was put there because her madam says she cooked with meat that was outside for 24 hours. She was kept for two years. Hmm. And she had a baby in prison. Oh, my God. So when we went to release her, we had to ensure that we made contact with the madam who put her there. Because the thing now is not to look at what happened. It's what will happen to her afterwards. Hmm. So what would she look at in this case of this man who died is what the company will do for the family yeah. afterwards. Oh, because he's lost, dead. Yeah. I mean, there's just absolutely nothing anybody can do about it. Belinda, what will be done for the family? Belinda, let me ask you this question, because the police is saying that yes. once the case is charged to court, there's nothing they can do about it. Is that correct? Unfortunately, in this country, I don't see much, because whoever wants to do anything about it must have money, you must have capital mm. to go against this particular company. We don't know how big the company is or how connected they are, mm. but they were able to put someone in prison and the person died 
and um, no, nothing was said about it except that you ladies have brought this issue up. So that's, that's one of the problems we face. So the thing, the, what we should look at right now is what can be done for the family afterwards. This man might be a breadwinner. Uh, so that's my contribution. Thank you, Belinda. Thank you Thanks. so much. Okay, so, so besides, um, you know, what can be done for the family, internally the police have a mechanism of investigating things like this. So we're asking the IG, what happened in the case of this young man? Uh, how did he die? How was it investigated? Was he charged to court? Was he held in detention by a court order? Or was he held in detention from one superior order? It's uh, above the top, my guard, the top superior order. Mm. Was it that kind of order? And if it was, what was the stake of the guard, the top, in the matter that did not concern him, that they held him? And what was the cause of the death? Exactly. Somebody exactly. must dig deeper than, you know, just yeah. compensating the family. Yes, the family deserve compensation, yeah. but compensation can't bring back a life. And so they, they must be grieving and they would want justice. Yeah. Justice will mean that somebody pays for this kind of suffering and the death of this young man unexplainably. I know. Let me go on you a know? big break. When we come back, we continue this conversation. Stay with us, Ubrata. Sure. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for call, uh, staying with us. We have a caller, Uluan Belayi. Good morning. Are you there, Homota? Good morning. Are you there, Uluan Belayi? Hello, sir. Are you there? Okay, so I think we lost that call. Right, so there's a story, I mean, recently I think I was sharing with Nima very, somebody, a friend of the house, this is somebody mm -hmm. that many of us know, you know, and he got into a situation. He called me and said, Mariah, what can I do? He needs help. Yes, he has zone four. So what's he happened? He rented... Um, a space from maybe like a BC, mm -hmm. right? And he's been paying BC three million naira every year for that space, thinking that BC owned the property. We'll find out later. Now, this BC, unfortunately, was renting it from Nima. Hmm. Hmm. So Nima now says, I need my property. So she now comes to me and says, ah, I want my, I, I, you can't, um, you come and pull down this your structure. He had paid three million naira, built up a nice structure, renovated the place. The place looks beautiful. He invested 17 million, hmm. making the place look so nice. Just for her to say, ah, sorry, the owner of the land wants the wants property. Wants to use it. And he's like, what's going on? So the, you kept disturbing the guy. The guy kept begging, please, I need to introduce me to the real owner. Let me even go and beg the person if they can give me some more time because I've invested so much. Yeah. Back and forth, this guy was putting her under pressure to leave. Now, she now got police to arrest me, to force me out. Hi. So the man was arrested and with his entire family, he called me like around that 5 a.m. No, around like 11.30, almost 11, somewhere around. They're taking us to the police station now. Wow. I told him to call Nima, but, but I, I didn't even know if he called the next day. So he didn't know what to do. I started, wow. I started, I started calling people. Like, what can we do to help this guy? You know, it's not that, that, so because she was very influential and she had power, she detained this man at the police. Oh, God. So the point is that this high-handedness we use because we have power, we have influence, we have money, over those who don't mm. is the issue here. And it's a Nigerian thing. We do it all the time. Yeah. It's a Nigerian house thing. House boys, thing. house girl, drive, everybody that we feel that we, are, we, we have something over. Just guy. arrest them. Oh, they are and, they, and they the stole my money. And allow themselves to be used, used. by these people. Yeah. You know, it, it's... Uh, it's um, not saying that once you're charged, they cannot, they cannot do anything about it. And I'm thinking, okay... No, but we, we, the police are the ones to charge. And the police administratively sometimes just say, we can't prosecute this and let's go. The police have the power to investigate matters and say, oh, based on what the evidence is that we have on this case, this is a no case. This, is, this cannot be sustained. And whether it's and a bailable offence. So they should stop murder. being tools know. for evil. Murder and rape that are not bailable offences. These are bailable offences. So but why I just run away. That's the problem. Why is still not in the police's um, purview to determine what is bailable and oh, what no. is not? I know. The cops. But they don't even charge these people to court. To court. Right there. Let me this take Ulu Ambelaye is back, I'm told. Good morning, are you there? Ulu mm Ambelaye, -hmm. are you there? Yes, you are saying. So, oh, it's, okay, go ahead. It's, it's, for me, the ideal is there. We have good laws, good you know, standards to follow, set by lawmakers. We have everything. <coughs> but we, the people, are the issue. You that they're asking you to lock up a young man, every time you go into the cell and you see him, you know this one, this one really no commit crime, and he's sick or he's mixing with... Yes, that's the situation with this young man. What happens to your conscience? And they left him there. 
They so, think so. So, children they have contacted the family. So, I mean, everybody has a responsibility here. The police exactly. should have contacted the family that your yeah. guy is getting sick. Oh. The police should have released him, taken him to hospital. They don't even if, if, if they are culpable. They are culpable. They are in fact their hands uh, zip inside this blood that we are talking but about. But unfortunately, we may not be able to do anything. We can against it. So the against IG, the police. The IG. We we've had instances like that. We've had instances where the IG gets up and does the needful, and we see justice start from the police themselves. I say, just they have pray They have all of that. That you have influence, or that you know somebody. If you enter their trouble, I know. I know from experience. I know there is this guy that does decorate. When my when I was fifty, and we were looking for him to come and no, no, when my brother was fifty, that was ten years ago. We were looking for him to come and decorate. We couldn't find him. I was calling his number. Meanwhile, Sars had locked him up. He went to go and buy a car unknowingly that had been used to kidnap somebody. Yes. Hey, police carried him. He was there for six months. So. <gasps> he was there for six months. When they even let him out, they still seized the car that he bought. That he bought. He didn't know it was a bad uh, uh, well, car. Uh, they seized the car. He said it was hers. He said they were killing people beside him. He said every day we're praying that. Ah, please let me come this. out. Let me come out. In fact, when they seized the car, he was even saying thank you, sir. Mm. And ran out. Let me take this call. Mm. Good morning, are you there? Ah. Mm. Hello, good morning, are you there? Yes, I'm there. You're live. Go ahead, ah. please. Hello, I'm the liar. Isaac on the line. Can you hear me? You're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I just want to make my um, comment on the show. Yes. Uh, um, regards to justice being demanded in Nigeria. And the issue with um, the Nigerian police system. I also, I could, I could remember, I had one issue like that also. That my elder sister was arrested. And she was pregnant. And what they charged her for. It was not even something, it was, it was, she was not even guilty of it. While we were there, and we were able pleading. And at the end of the day, tear gas was, was released into the air. And she was uncomfortable. She was not even released. Later on, when the DPU came and we were talking, we came with for another Navy officer. The DPU had to tell us that we have to pay. That if we do not pay, that they are not going to release my other sister. So he was not even telling us that. And this we know that he is going to maintain the police station. So I don't think when we talk about um, our police system, my prayer is that I don't even want my enemy to have issues with our police because mm. they have really failed us. They mm. failed us, and I don't think there's anything any of us can do because mm. we don't have money. I didn't mean we don't have money that day. She will be there with her pregnancy, and she will give birth there. So that's my take on the issue. You Thank know, you very much. Right. So much. I, yes, I, I think we should have an independent commission that monitors the police. Mm. Quality management commission. Quality, yes, that monitors. See, power that goes unmonitored, unquestioned. Mm -hmm. This is how it's unregulated. This is how it just goes. You feel like worst case, they, they will shout, they will call us, and that's it. We move on. Everybody's doing the same thing. I will get this person arrested, and Oga at the top will say, oh, yeah, release that person. My friend, why are you holding that person? And uh, all of us, we do the same thing. So what are they talking about? But if we have that independent commission that monitors, so you know that you are responsible for everything you do. There are checks and balances. They uh -huh. come into the cell. They ask questions. What is Mr. John doing in the cell? What crime did he commit? Why, when was he arrested? Why still there? Why is this one here? Why did this one, this one die? Why is this one sick in the cell? We hold them accountable. I think that is where we should be looking towards. Let's bring this conversation to reality. So I'm going to paint two scenarios. Somebody's working with you right now, just mm -hmm. like you said earlier. He actually stole five million naira jewelry from you. Okay. And it's clear. Yeah. He confesses. He doesn't have money to pay it back because he took the money and did the jewelry, he sold it mm. and sent the money to maybe a village or something. Yeah. He was still working with you. Eventually they found out and they, they maybe they were able to probe a bit and found out it was him and he mm. confessed. Mm. Now, what do you do? Many people, the average Nigerian that I know would call the police to arrest him first and say, you have to find a way to pay, either pay back, back mm. somehow. Go and call your family members, whatever I did, they bought there and start selling, they start selling. That's what we do. Yeah. Now, we need to agree, is that right or is that wrong? That's number one. Mm. Number two, if a situation whereby, in this, in this situation, where you actually wrongfully um, um, accuse somebody, you, don't, you, don't, you didn't realize you didn't wrong, this person was wrongfully accused, this person has gone to do some time in jail, and then you found the product that you thought was stolen, 
how do you who makes sure you compensate? Mm -hmm. Who is monitoring? So I want to I, I want to because the real this is a Nigerian story. You go yes. through this every single day. Yes. Many of us call police to arrest. Mm. That's the truth. Mm. So let me bring back yeah, the you're right. talk about having a body that supervises or monitors the police. So if in anger, I say, okay, let's lock ha, ha, my five million, lock him up. Yes. Lock him up for three weeks. Lock him up for one because I'm venting. I've yes. lost money. Maybe yes. that is all I have and everything. Yes. And then that body that supervises says, it's against the law to keep this man for so so and so. We will work out a modality where he starts to pay you. But we cannot keep him except you want to charge him to court. So that's what stays as a check and balance. Meanwhile, who does that now? So that we who, do not... Which, which, who does that? The police? The police, police, right? Which police, police service commission? Do they be do doing it? that? Airing police officers are sanctioned and punished by the police service commission. That is the purpose why they were created. Not to look on. into their... To sanitize the system. Yeah. And that was bad at the time. Also, if a person and you do business, you give the person money... Maybe let's say five million, like you said, and the person just goes away with your money. It's conversion. That's a crime. So the police don't have to detain the person for your sake. Mm -hmm. You, you just have to petition the police. I give so 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 person cop zero zero naira. The person has broken the cop, melted it into a plate. He has converted it to his own personal use. The police would arrest him and charge him to court. Hmm. Establish conversion and then lock him up in prison, serving his time under the law. You have not done anything wrong. You know? But the police now say, Madam, don't worry, we'll get the money. Police, yeah. you are not debt collector. Exactly. Police are not debt. Madam, we'll get the money for you. Don't worry. They will now go arrest him. When we contrary. lock you up, all your ancestors will go and bring the money. That's the norm. That one is totally wrong. That's wrong. If you lock him up, his ancestors bring the money. What are you locking? Is that your job? If your money is owing you money, you go and do a small claim in court. Action in court in Lagos, it is even very fast, maybe less than six months max. You get your judgment for the amount and the compensation for the person who converted. All of that will be taken, you go into his assets and everything, they'll pay you the money. So there are some matters that are just court. civil, that are totally on criminal, that you, you just see police be putting their head inside and be messing things mm. up. You know, as a fellow style, you know, me and my have entered police while How many times? <laughs> a couple of times. <laughs> there was one. <laughs> we said, ah, what time? You go? Ah, I was, ah, shrine is bubbly now. And that's how my sister, my, myself, and, and her boyfriend, we worked, came out of the house maybe about 11. They caught us walking down the road looking for taxi. We spent the night in jail. <laughs> for one drink. <laughs> for one drink. They caught us for one drink. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you can't do that now. That, they don't do that anymore. Well, they, they do. don't they catch do. you for wondering. wondering. But you may not come out. Yeah. While in university, <laughs> we, went, <laughs> we went for a prison <laughs> intervention. I think... I was not, not, me. Yes, I, nah, I, I will explain for you. <laughs> so there are areas where you were carrying me out there. Like my two beggar. You want to steal car. <laughs> mm. So a young man, we were in prison, doing a prison um, humanitarian work. Nasfat came. They had trained some people. They were graduating students. And one woman came with Nasfat. And as she just turned like this, she saw a young man. They were reuniting with, in tears and all of that. And painfully crying and all of that, thinking, I want to rock, what's cool, you know? He was locked up for two years. And he did not reach a family member. Hmm. Hmm. Two years. He closed work, lives in Ajegule, closed work, and decided, ah, I don't have enough money from my salary to take a bus. Let me just trek it across to Kirikiri Jeez. area. And police picked him up for hmm. one. Do you want to steal car? That guy yeah. stayed in Kirikiri. Two years. Are you could not you reach a family member yes. until the auntie came with Nasfat to come and be hugging him. In my very before, as a ah. young under, uh, undergrad law student. I, that was the first time I'd seen such nonsense happening. And we know, prisons reforms uh, association, show that for you and all of those okay. uh, bodies I work with. Constantly are working to get young men out. Let me take this call from Ife. Ife has been holding. Good morning, Ife. Are you prison. there? Hi, good morning. Ladies. Yes, you're alive. Go ahead, please. All right, thank you. Okay, so um, I just um, heard um, one of um, the ladies in the, um, in the studio. studio said that um, there should be a team actually set up to um, go around um, each police station trying to um, find out illegal detention and um, see who is not supposed to be there right. at one particular point or the other. Now, I remember vividly that um, a team has already been set up between the Nigerian police and the NBA already, who is actually responsible for this particular um, thing or purpose that has just been mentioned. Mm. But the problem is this. 
no matter the thing you set up. I've had a situation where I went to a particular police station in Mushin to bail someone. Now, a team came, I mean, around 11 p.m. A team came. They, they held me there, too. They said I was mm. a suspect because I had come to bail this person. Ah, wow. Now, a team went around on patrol just to come and check what was going on. Do you know what they did? Immediately, someone alerted them that a team was coming to that particular division to check on the suspects or the, the, the people that were detained in the cells. Right. They quickly moved to the cells. They extracted a number of people out of the cell, took them somewhere else to hide them, and then they only presented a few that they wanted that particular team to see to the team when they arrived. Hey. Now, that is to tell you the level of corruption that has been into every sector, even in the police. So whether a team has been set up or not, I tell you, if mm. they do not want that team to see what they do not want the team to Can see, we hide it? nothing will happen. A lot has been going on. And recently, I also went to, to the division to bail someone who money was collected from a young man. They collected 350000 out from the young man, took him around the whole Lagos, drove him around everywhere, and then at the end of the day, they brought the young man to the station to keep him there, and then they let him go. Unfortunately, the young man had noticed he picked one space, and was able to identify the police officer, hmm. which we took him on, and the money was recovered through the help of the PRO in Lagos, and um, of course, the um, first PRO, who is um, Ulumu Iwa, um, Lade Jodi in Abuja, were in contact with them constantly. And another one, again, we did in April, February this year, we went 30,000, and another young man again, you know, with the division. So all these things are happening. A team has been set up. Hmm. But I tell you whether the Thank team goes around or not, yes, they go around. But See, that's the Nigeria one, factor. Yeah. Fair, thank you very much for sharing this with us because, mm -hmm. you see, it goes back to we the people. Yes. No matter, we always find a way to circumvent it. No matter how much policy, because somebody was saying that Nigeria has one of the best policies in the world. We have, like, when it comes to the Constitution, oh, the, the, we have, like, some the of laws. the most reputable laws in this country. But we, the people, always find a way to circumvent it. And that's what happened there. Hmm. So even though I know what the quality might be, mm. except for technology. It's only yes. technology right now that we can begin to use. Who is going to man the technology? The person can see off some camera. That's what will happen in the uh, trade fair area, the, in your traffic area, mm. the uh, call-up system, mm -hmm. the electronic call-up system. That's they the found issue. They found technology. It, yeah. But somebody's still going yeah, there yeah. with the computer. Uh, let me just show about our area, the shrine area, you know. There's a place that we have been making U-turn, and it's completely legal. We've been making U-turn there for... Yes, well, yeah. we have been there 22 years. We have been making going towards other small and that's you too. Yes, yes. yes. no, 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 not going towards other small. Coming from other small, okay. past the shrine, you make the U-turn. Yes. Then there is another place that they come out like this. But the road is like this. Yes. You are not supposed to turn there. Uh, those people, last man, mm. they have decided that that place is an illegal. His business is dis <laughs> discreet. They collected <laughs> 20,000 from my sister. <laughs> are you serious? I'm telling you, true. <laughs> They have now put my one sign no, no, there was no U turn. And people and don't will know. Not because be they have been making U turn there for years. And they put cameras I'm telling too. you. Ooh. Well, they collect every day. They can arrest up to 20, 30 you see, people. They, they are called the um, business. They are, they are, they are, they are just hide. CBD. In the corner there. They go hide. Central business so, 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 in front of Decker House. That U turn. That U Yes. It's illegal now. Yes. It's illegal. They will just come out. Bam. They have been arresting people. Collecting money. A senior sister. And hey. it's, that's the Nigerian. So this, we are talking technology. We will still find a way to circumvent it. The place that should be illegal, where you turn to go, that, is, that one is now legal. Ah. <laughs> that's Nigeria. Let me take I say, don't pray Nigeria doesn't happen to you. Hey, no, YK. No. Baba prayer. Ah. Let me take Chema. Good morning, Chema. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. You're live. Go ahead. Can you tell me? Very clearly. Right. Go ahead. Okay, I want to make a contribution concerning the police issues we are having in Nigeria. Yeah. Please go ahead. Go ahead, Shama. Okay. Okay. You know, eh, like one of your colleagues <coughs> said that maybe they should set up a committee that can even be checkmating the police. Yeah. But the fact remains that that committee will end up increasing the money they charge people. Mm. Because before you know, they will go and still join them. And when they want to collect 100,000 mm. from you for them, they will ask the one they will give to so the committee. The the oh. My brother to... had a case with a man. Can you hear me? We can yes, hear you loud and clear. Okay. My brother had a, 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 an issue with a man. The man is actually a lecturer and at the same time a priest. 
My brother went to borrow money to sort out his school things. Hundred, uh, two hundred thousand. I don't know the agree. I can't really go into details. Let me just give you. So before you know, after some years, the man now came after him that he should pay him eight hundred thousand in addition as an interest. Now, instead of the man used police to pick up my brother, I know that the police people know that it's not right for such interest rate, eight hundred thousand because of two hundred. Oh, we lost that call. So me, I don't want to agree that Nigeria is the problem. If Nigeria was a problem, we would have sound laws like we have. Not be Nigerians, they draft our laws. They didn't borrow the laws from outside. Our national assemblies, our state houses of assemblies sit on these laws and they pass them. They react to problems like this, they pass new laws to stem them. But Nigerians keep cutting corners. So it is a Nigerian that is a police officer and imp that is, has impunity at the highest level. It is a Nigerian that is the Nigerian uh, businessman or other Nigerian that thinks that, you know, I have powers. I can, you know, carry out this kind of level of impunity. Nothing will happen. There are, there are people. And so the system must sanitize itself, mm. which is why on this particular case, we have solution no? two or three. Number one, the IG must investigate how this boy was detained and died in police detention yeah. internally. <clears throat> the other way, the family must go to court, ask the court to ask the police to explain or present the body of their brother alive. How did he die in police detention? Why was he not detained by a court order? Where are the court orders? And failure to do that, go and get a civil order against them. Because if they want to settle you, they make you forget. They will give you small things. Mm -hmm. But when the court wants to punish in this kind of matter, when the matter goes to court civilly, the compensation will be such that it will deter anybody in their life that attempt it. Mm -hmm. And the federal government must make sure that the police officers in question, whatever it is that is their uh, entitlement at the end of service, will be used towards pay payment of this young man's uh, yeah. uh, judgment when he comes to the Let me take this from John. John, you follow it go. through. You're live. John, thanks for calling. You're live. Yeah, hello? Go ahead, please. Okay. Um, I want to just let a little input, you know, about what is being discussed now, in, you know, regarding the police. Um, actually, um, I don't want to stand uh, this person uh, to the police force. But to me, the police start commission, you know, they, are, they have become untouchable. Let me just put it this way. A lot of things is happening in the police force. There are various police stations. There is need to check make the police. Really? Oh, it's really I'm there's need to check make the police. Sorry, yeah. John. So we have some messages yeah, here. Good Beat says, the main problem is the police should not be charging people. They should only provide evidence. There should be a state prosecution office that would decide if the evidence is good enough. Uh, principal said, there are evil and lawless people everywhere, but the government was set up to put people in check right from the days of the Bible and the Quran. Um, Corey Michael says, one white boy TME slapped the other day. I had the right to press charges. Police asked me, do you want to press charges? I let it go. Make with they learn to let things go sometimes. Adola says, uh, no difference between citizens and people in government. The citizens are the same people that go into right. government. It's very hypocritical of us to criticize them. So where do we, at what point do we now begin to do things right? Mm -hmm. If we don't criticize people and ensure that we too do not repeat the mistakes of those people, mm -hmm. do we now ignore because almost everybody is the same and not say it when it happens? We need to hold ourselves accountable, first of all, and hold other people accountable who are supposed to be our leaders, who are supposed to be in charge. If you have a job to do, do it do to it. the best of your ability. If not, but people will hold you bringing, accountable. So, so if you are bringing... You're, you're bringing, um, let's say you have a bowl of peas, of beans, right? Mm. And you're taking two or three of these peas and taking them separately to become the leaders. How are they going to act differently from the other beans? I think they're the same, we're a bunch, bunch of the same things. Yeah. So we, this, this bowl, bowl of beans, mm -hmm. expect these three 
pieces to of do to, magic. To do magic. Because, because we, we don't know where yes. they, they do well, exactly. Are you they do no, 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 so I'm just saying, no, I'm mm. just saying that we always expect so much of our leaders. Mm. But we're just like them. That's why I started by we're saying just exactly like we them. need to start holding ourselves accountable. Everybody needs to look us. inwards and look at the mirror. In my little position, how do I handle the things that I need to do? Do I have the will to do the right things, whether somebody's looking at us or not? We start there. But that does not also mean that we will not chastise people who are in the public space supposed to do their job. Okay, let me tell you about people in the public voice space. Speaking, Take everyone point. around us, we must begin to hold ourselves accountable mm -hmm. and try to change. Ah, we are let wicked. Me take Hassan. Hassan, are you there from Lekki? Hassan, you're live. Go ahead, please. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. This is a very serious matter. It is. Of uh, the breaches of human rights by the law enforcement officers that are supposed to protect the dignity of mankind. Look, in every police station, you see, we continue to repeat one thing. We continue to speak like a broken record. In every police station, there's a human rights office in every police station you see across the country. It was the cause of this outcry that that human rights office came to be. Please, can we please call on those human rights offices to do their job? That's number one. Number two, look, the, the bridge is all over the place. From the courtroom, the real accused get exchanged for an innocent person. They will arrest innocent person and replace him with the accused to the prison. That one happened in Lagos here. It happened all over the country. Look, when you see things happening, you just see that people just decided in their own way to be law on their own. There's nothing like human rights. And let me tell you, even what led to answers in Lagos has started rearing its ugly head now. Every day I'm going home from my papa, I will see policemen. They don't stop me. I will stop. They will greet me. I will pass. But let me tell you, all those guys, you will see them stopping them as you are going towards Marina. They will stop them, they slap them, they slap them, of them, all these cars, all those boys, they are children of being Yahoo. Look, I'm not for Yahoo. But the issue now is this. Right. Every young man oh. is not a Yahoo. No, well, your, not. Your, your sin now when you're driving a car is to be young. Yeah. If you have a, a young laptop boy, mistakenly in your car. Uh, if you're a young boy, if you're driving a car, do, uh, automatically a Yahoo. A Yahoo. Then God help you if you have Rasta. Last time, dead luck on your hair. You are definitely there. There is no hope for you. My, my brother has one adopted one like that. He's every day. He's inside police. My brother is constantly adopting sons all of them. <laughs> <laughs> he has three now. <laughs> every time one adopted son, adopted no, He has three. Okay. This one is a raster. Rasta. Oh. So he him, is customer of police. My brother serious? is always going to bail him from home. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because it's a, when they see the dead luck like this, oh yeah, yeah. Mm. They will just collect him. We have to but, wrap up. But, you know, I mean, it's, uh, this is one of those... But what things. I was going to say is, because um, Hassan was talking about human rights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even the police stations are not human rights. The police, they are ugly. They are not built well. They mm -hmm. don't have computers. So they don't even look after the police. So mm -hmm. why do the police look after you? Mm -hmm. There's a major part of, you know, a public offices that we, <clears throat> we have failed to continue to ensure. When a person is approaching a public office for employment, like a police force, or appointment into the IG's office and all of that, there is a character check where it is advertised. Somebody can then say he has been of this kind of character and he's not this kind of person. He's not worthy of that office. Those kind of checks have been, you know, killed gradually. But these were Nigerian systems and they used to work. So we are Nigerians, we are, we are straightforward people, we follow the law. These people that are, this, they are the few amongst us, they are not the general, we should not allow okay, that to general up. brush to paint all of us. After, let me wrap up with Can't this statement, because up, I know that we are hurt and we say a lot of things while we are hurt. But I got a message from somebody who I think I should read. It says, impunity may be prevalent now, mm -hmm. but it's not a Nigerian thing, mm -hmm. as you asserted. Criticize your government, but don't throw your country under the bus.
because you throw yourself with it, which I, which I acknowledge. So sometimes we get frustrated and we just want to, you know, and say, the country, don't let Nigeria happen to you. But the mm -hmm. truth is still our country. You yeah. can't go anywhere else. Yes. It's all we've got. So yes. in our anger, in our outburst, we must oh. also remember that let's not throw Nigeria under the bus because the truth is that mm -hmm. this happens everywhere in the world. That's all we can take on the show today. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.